Hey everybody, Marcus Vegas here with Scott Coker, the head of Bellator MMA here at uh, Fan Day in San Diego. Uh, Scott, I know it's uh, been a few months since uh, you took over Bellator. Uh, how's the ride been so far for you? Boy, it's been uh, it's been a really fast train ride. And I was just telling somebody else earlier, you know, when we built Strike Force, it was kind of like we built as we went. And we only had four fighters under contract when we first started Strike Force. And then we built and you know, eventually we had Fedor and you know, all the big, Nick Diaz and Gina and, and everybody. But in the very beginning, we had four fighters. We had, I had uh, Frank Shamrock, Kung Lee, um, Gilbert Melendez, and Josh Thompson. And so we kind of built it as we went. And then, you know, and then, you know, the rest is history. This one, uh, this opportunity, I felt like I signed on to the company. And then two days later, I was jumping on a train going 800 miles an hour because it was like, oh, by the way, we have a fight in uh, three days. Or, no, I'm sorry, like in three weeks. And... It was a matter of, hey, I'm Scott, I'm the new guy, I know how to do this, I've done this before, but, um, you know, uh, we have a fight in three weeks, so let's all get busy and get to work and make this a success, but it was a much different animal. This one feels like I'm, we're still going 500 miles an hour. The weekly shows, I was telling somebody this, I said, we did more shows in this amount of time with Bellator, it's only been four months I've been here, than the first two years of Strike Force put together. So... That's that's a crazy schedule. <laughs> you know, uh, looking at it, uh, when you were coming in, uh, did you at all get overwhelmed or, or maybe have like second thoughts like, ah, oh, this is just too much? No, you know what? Honestly, um, uh, it, it was a lot of adjustment, right? And I was adjusting and we're moving, but you know, I feel like I know how to throw fights and promote fights and and and, and coordinate everything and make sure things are moving. Uh, we have a great staff. Anybody that can do fights, you know, 12, 14 weeks in a row, it, it's a pretty amazing staff and and. Um, uh, but for me, it was all that experience I had with K1, all that experience I had with Strike Force, all the experience I had, you know, working with the UFC and understanding the, the martial arts landscape. It really helped me navigate, you know, through the last four weeks of, of entering into this business. Now, when you came in, what were some of the things that you looked at and you said, "No, this got to go," and, and what are some of the things that you said, "You know what? We have to incorporate this." Well, um, it's no mystery about the tournament format that um, I think there's a time and place to do tournaments but you better have you know eight of the super badass ass that's right like you would have the best fighters you put them in an eight-man tournament or you do uh, a four-man tournament maybe and but you would have the right athletes and has to, the timing has to be right and um, I don't think you just do tournaments after tournaments after tournaments after tournaments because at that point it's just like a, a volume, but you're not you're not putting on fights that the fans want to see. You're not putting on fights that are going to move the television needle, or that the media is going to care about, or that are, are real relevant in the MMA space. And that's what we want to do. We want to be promoters that put on relevant fights, fights to drive the television needle, uh, drive the media to come support the fights, and to put butts in seats. You know, and that's that's really our goal. From when you started to where you want to get, if you were to gauge it with a percentage, uh, mm -hmm. are you 50% there, are you 40% oh, there? Are you talking about for this new opportunity? Yeah, yeah, well for Bellator, you know, with, mean, with the changes you want to do, like how far along are you to where you feel you want to take it yeah, to? I mean, think about it, I've only been here four months, yeah. and the first month was just like, hi, I'm Scott, what's your <laughs> name? You know, that's like the first 30, 45 days. I think we've done some great things though in four months, and uh, I think you're starting to see a little shift, uh, signing Melvin, bringing Paul Daly back, having the female division, uh, getting out of tournaments, going through super fight format. So we're making some moves, but you know, give me uh, give me 18 months. You know, we're gonna put great fights along the way, but uh, we're gonna build some great fighters from the ground up, just like we did with our last group. You know, and what I mean by that is, look at Daniel Cormier came from the you know from the ground up. Daniel uh, Tyron Woodley, um, Luke Rockhold. I mean, that's just to name a few. And you know, that's that's we're gonna build these fighters, and then uh, when the free agency market hits, we're gonna probably make a bid for some of the top athletes um, and then we're gonna have a robust roster and then that's when I'll feel really confident about hey this is gonna be a lot of fun in the meantime we got some great championship fights we're gonna fights that fans want to see like I talked about and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch how close were you to signing Gina and was there a lot of talks uh, going on with her you know what, we had one conversation with her management and it was very clear to me that she wanted to fight at 135 to fight Ronda and we're not going to have a 135 division, so you know what, I mean I consider her a friend and you know I've known her for a long time. I mean the first time I met Gina I was walking into uh, 
uh, a Muay Thai gym in Vegas, and I think she was like 16 or 17 years old. And she fought on the undercards of all the K1s for us, and you know she fought the first female MMA fight in the state of California, fighting Elena Maxwell in 2006. But that was eight years ago, and you know she's had a tremendous movie career. She's doing fantastic, and um, you know I, I I wish her well. You know, uh, you're starting to sign a, a lot of talent uh, with this event you're putting on on the 15th. Uh, in the main event, we're seeing uh, Tito fight Stefan Bonner. Uh, Stefan coming with a, a little bit of heat, though, because of what happened uh, with this drug test. I guess, you know, how do you deal with a situation like that where fans are, are kind of asking, like, why is he fighting? He, he didn't serve a suspension. He, he got busted for the drug test. Right. Uh, I don't know all the details of the suspension, but I, I'm... I, I'm, I'm the fans are saying he should have been suspended because it happened right. in Brazil. They can't oh, really enforce it, him yeah, coming uh, over here. I'm not sure, but um, you know we're bound by the California State Athletic Commission. They gave some rules and guidelines to abide by, and uh, you know we tested him, and the results are being sent to the state. And um, you know what? People make mistakes, you know, and I think that uh, um, you know Stefan's no different, and and he made a judgment error, um, and. You know, to me, it's like we're going to give a second chance, and you know, I have no problem with that. Saying that, um, and when I think about you know the the history of of, of Stefan and, and Tito, that's a fight that should have happened years ago, right? And so, you know what? I'll say this: people say, "Oh, it was like pro wrestling; they did this thing in the cage," and but honestly, uh, that was all real. There's some real emotion in there. I was in the middle of it, and all I remember was like spit flying by my head. I mean, I'm just like trying to break these guys up. But on November 15th, that cage door is going to shut. And all the antics and all the talk and all this goes out the window because they're going to they're gonna have to fight. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. You know, well, on a closing note, uh, you say you know, it's, it's been a, a hell of a four months for you. And you mentioned you know, the first uh, 30 days was, hi, I'm Scott. You know, yeah. Was that uh, awkward at all? Like, tell me about that phase, uh, yeah, getting because, to know everybody. Because they're a team that already has worked together. I'm yeah. the new guy, right? Yeah. And so, and it was like... What was you like know, your mindset then, like coming into to that? Well, the first thing I walked in, I was like, what do all you guys do? It's like an army of people. They have these palatial offices in Orange County. And I'm like, what do all you guys do? And why are you in such a big building, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but <clears throat> in seriousness, they got a great crew. And uh, you know they put on fights every week for 12 weeks straight. That that's a burnout. That's like that's a crazy schedule, you know. But they're able to do it, and uh, you know that's something that uh, you know I, I really respect from them. But really, it was like the first month was like trying to learn everybody's name. You know, can we all wear name tags or something? Because I <laughs> my memory's going. I can't remember everybody's name. But but I just you know was trying to learn who like what does everybody do? How does this all operation work together? And uh, how do you guys work with Viacom? How does you how do you work with Spike TV? Who does what? And that took that was about a 45 day or two month process, you know. And we're doing fights in between and planning other fights, you know, in between that. So it was just like you know, jump on board. Here we go, yeah. lift off. Any uh, big signings in the next few weeks or months? Uh, you know what? Uh, we will, but uh, that's top secret. I can't tell you. <laughs> Come on, I got stage four clearance. Come on, Scott. Uh, you know what? Uh, I believe it, but uh, I cannot say. <laughs> you know, uh, looking at uh, the headquarters, uh, are you going to move uh, Operation uh, San Jose or are you keeping it uh, in Newport Beach? Uh, that's undecided right now. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll decide that probably sometime in December or, you know, at the end of November. But, um, you know, it's been an interesting time commuting back and forth. Uh, but, um, you know, I think that the Bay Area is something that we have to have some type of presence because, you know, I promoted there for 30 years. 30 years this March and 15 will be my 30th year promoting in the Bay Area. And we have a tremendous amount of fans and I think I helped build the fan base there uh, to appreciate martial arts fights. And so why wouldn't we go back there? Whether we'll have an office there or what kind of office, uh, that hasn't been determined. Mellow Force, pretty much. <laughs> Spike Force. Spike Force. <laughs> Scott, thank All you right. very much. Certainly appreciate it. Here is Scott Coker, the head of Bellator MMA. Marcos Vegas here in San Diego.